Why are you wearing sunglasses? Because the world is bright. What? It's not bright. No, you're not bright. Neither is your future. You're dimmer than a hole in the brain of a rock. Stop it. It's nighttime, asshole. Maybe you're blinking for too long. Can you please stop joking around? I don't like dark humor. Look, I'd rather have it your way. Night is supposed to be the natural state of the universe. Soothing, infinite, dark. Nothing to see, nothing to do, nothing. Just perfect, dreamless sleep beneath a boundless blanket of black. I call that bliss. Unfortunately for us, we're shackled by gravity chains to a gigantic, gassy ball of unsleeping light that is irresponsibly responsible for this unnatural, ungodly, chronic condition we are currently experiencing called daytime. I'd rather have it your way too, but I'm looking around and all I see is nothing but night and more nothing. That's too much nothing to be the natural state of anything. And how the hell would you even know what nothing is unless there were first a thing? Without something like the sun, nothing has no thing by which to define itself. You're being silly. Take off the sunglasses. You don't get it. Nothing is just a word. And words are things. They're things made up by other things because things are scared of thinglessness. They're scared of looking down their pants and being thingless. It's embarrassing to be unalive, unerect, empty. But ultimately, that's what all things are, dying and dead. That's the truth below our waists. That's the truth above the clouds, no matter how much that sun-shaped Amber Alert wants to scream about it. That's why I say, just stop with all the screaming and the whining and the delaying and Get it over with. Just supernova already and truly be nothing. But we aren't nothing. And the sun isn't just a thing. It's intelligent. It's divine. To be alive is to worship. You have no choice. Whether you like it or not, the sun is the center of your universe. Sure. I worship the sun in the same way my grandfather worshipped nicotine got nothing to do with being or whatever. An object in motion stays in motion, right? So if you're ripping cigs, you're going to keep ripping them cigs until a more powerful force acts upon you, which in my grandfather's case was lung cancer. Just because it's less taboo to be addicted to natural things like sunlight and oxygen doesn't make it any less of a horrible wasting addiction. Let me summarize your position back to you and you tell me if I'm a little off. So you're avoiding the sun in the middle of the night because the D in vitamin D stands for drugs. No, you got it wrong. The sun is not a god. The sun is a morally indifferent, unloving, uncaring, inert object of random power that is indiscriminately pissing hot nuclear death all over our skin cancering faces. We exist in its tyranny of light for no reason, and soon enough, the tyrant will be overthrown by sweet, sweet entropy. You got it? No. Indifferent is just the wrong word. The sun isn't indifferent. It's... it's blind. But it doesn't need to see us to love us. In fact, it loves us by indiscriminately giving us the ability to see. To see what a stupid asshole you are? For the sun to be blind, it would have to be aware of itself as blind, which it isn't. It's not blind, it's blinding. Try staring into it long enough and your eyeballs will melt like ice cubes. You call that love? Okay, without the sun, your eyeballs wouldn't even mean anything. You'd have meaningless eyeballs! I want meaningless eyeballs! What do you think the sunglasses are for? What about flowers blooming? Desertification. Spring break? Global warming? Hot girl summer! Impossible beauty standards and heat stroke. You're not joking. The world really is too bright for you. Yeah, it is. And for you, the world's too dark? You know, for a conversation about light, it's getting pretty heavy.
I don't understand. Why? So it's too bright for me and too dark for you. Where's the truth? I guess... I don't know. Maybe there is no objective truth. Maybe there is, but we just can't see it with our subjective eyes. Which means we're both kind of in the dark about what's true. Or that we're both enlightened that nothing really is true. Maybe we don't want the truth. Maybe that's what we're doing here. Waiting for it to go away. It's not gonna go away, is it? Nope. The truth. That we're both fictional characters in a short film that may or may not exist. Yep. There's also a chance that we haven't even been cast. And this film hasn't been made. And that we don't exist. Except as unrealized ideas. In the concussed head of a shitty screenwriter. My own words repel me. Why do I keep writing them? I don't have to. I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to breathe. I just want to. Even though it scares me. Creating something. Anything. Even an ugly, unremarkable, unseen, unappreciated thing, it scares me. Because even that thing no one likes has a pulse. It beats, you know? And beating takes work. It's not easy to beat and beat and beat and then have your rhythm not dance to. Sometimes it feels like my whole world is a blank page and I live on the margins. A blinking cursor with nothing to say. Words have meaning, but I don't. And the great tragedy were to become flesh. You deserve a better God. I can't give you truth. I'm a narcissist, I'm pretentious, I'm just a writer. And writers are just pennies and cracks. Not worth the copper. If it's true what they say, that language is a finger pointing at the moon, then to focus on the finger is to miss the moon. Philip K. Dick once said that reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. What happens when I stop believing in myself? Do I vanish? But, you know, even when you can't see it anymore, the sun is still there. Sunshine, my only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take, please don't shine, please don't shine, please don't shine, please don't shine, please don't shine. Where's the joy? Where's the joy? Where's the joy?
Please my sunshine.